All right, guys, uh, we're back for another video. I have another hour to tonight that I can mess with this uh, cylinder head. Uh, last time we installed the cam, well, actually, we, I wonder what did we do last time? I don't even remember. Anyway, I know we took the cam out, cleaned it up, and reinstalled it into the new head uh, from the old head here. But uh, we installed the cam, installed the um, seal here. Um, so tonight, I think I'm going to try to hmm all right i'm going to install the cam sprocket uh get that all torqued down um the thrust plate the cam thrust plate or this little catch that goes right here i'm going to install that um so i'm going to see if that that needs to be torqued down i'm not sure if it is after i get that on um, i'm going to finish cleaning up the rockers and the lifters and the guides We've got one clean, and this is kind of a test run, so this one's been ready to go on for a while now. Um, the rest of them are sitting in their individual cups, so I can put them back where they need to go on this new head. Uh, they've been soaking for over a day now in purple power, and I pulled one out a little bit ago, and it's um, it is it's definitely clean. Uh, the varnish is, is eaten off of it, but I'm still going to have to kind of wash them down a little bit um, and, and maybe wipe some varnish off, uh, but it's certainly not stuck. It's not baked on there like it was. Uh, before. So you may run into um, some issues like this with a remanufactured head. Um, I'm certain you probably wouldn't run into anything like this with a new head, but this looks like it got hit with something or dropped or probably hit with a hammer or something like that um, previously. And and this, um, the thrust plate here wouldn't, originally it wouldn't go down there at all. So again, this Dents and dings like this are probably only common in a remanufactured head, but just be aware you may run into a few little issues like that. Okay, so I've installed this. Um, and make sure you have your cam pulled out enough that this will fit down in the groove. Uh, if you've got your cam pushed in too far, it's going to sit on a um, uh, kind of a journal thing down there. Or this this end piece here, and it's not going to fall down into the groove. So just pull it out a little bit and make sure it sits down in there properly. If the holes don't line up, you know you need to pull this out a little bit. <clears throat> so next thing I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and put the cam uh, sprocket on. Okay, I got the blue thread locker on the bolt, and I'm going to and tighten this in. Alright, so I've got my T-handle back in there, uh, same one I used in the previous videos. So now I'm going to torque it down to 77 foot-pounds. Okay, so this has been put back on there, 77 foot-pounds with this torque down to. Um, this won't spin, if you, if you remember the old, your old head, if you're kind of following along with this. Um, it's a lot easier to spin when it's pulled off because it's just coated with a light, lightweight oil. The assembly lube, which all the journals have on it, um, is a lot thicker than normal lube. So don't be, uh, don't be afraid if this is a little bit harder to turn um, than it was when you took it off. This will take time for the assembly lube to break down a little bit. And actually, as I've been turning it here, it's already a little bit smoother than it was. So. By the way, um, I'm using the Tecton torque wrench. So, when I was doing research on these, uh, this is by far the um, the best value for your money. Look them up on Amazon; you'll see they got a bunch of a bunch of really good reviews, and it's very popular. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to move on to finish uh, cleaning these uh, rockers up, and um, and then um, I'll go ahead and mount these back on the head. So, just to give you an idea of what these look like now. And you can go back to one of the previous videos if you want to see what they look like. Okay. Yeah, that's a big difference. I mean this has kind of got a um, grayish brown look, but I think that's the normal look for them. Before it was just burnt black and you couldn't even rub the varnish off. That's how thick it was or how baked on there it was. 
big change. And let's see, under the fulcrum. I'll check under the fulcrum. Yeah, it's clean. Alright, I'm just going to wash these off and uh, then I'm going to rub them down with oil just very lightly. Um, and then they'll be ready to go. Alright, so here's where we are now with the first six rockers, um, guides, and um, lifters installed. I will go ahead and show you how to install the last, uh, uh, the last set here for cylinder four in a second. These aren't torqued down yet. Uh, they're just hand tightened in, um, so that they're um, that everything's it's tight enough where nothing's coming loose. Uh, I, I did go ahead and put some four by fours under each side of the cylinder head because uh, I know that depending on how this cam is positioned, or actually it doesn't even matter how the cam is positioned, um, at some point when I torque these down. Um, the valves are going to get extended, and so the valves are going to are going to get pushed out of here. So you want to have this elevated, so you don't tear up anything. So I went ahead and elevated that for when I torque these down in a minute. Um, but before I show that, um, I went ahead and started working on the um, intake manifold. Now, if you remember in the disassembly video before. <clears throat> pieces of the valve seat got sucked up into here and um, they were actually falling out of uh, the seat dropped in cylinder uh, 4 which is here and um, pieces had already made luckily uh, I, I stopped the car when I did because pieces fell out of, of the exit for um, the intake on cylinder 2 so pieces were almost over to the second cylinder um, that had got sucked out of uh, cylinder four. So um, there, there were pieces all in here. You could, you could shake this, uh, the intake, and uh, you could hear a rattling. So what I did was there's a plug uh, down here at the bottom of the intake manifold, and the plug looks is just like that. So what I, what I did was. Um, I took a, like a four inch um, socket extension um, and I seated it on one side of the plug and I just knocked it in and it swiveled um, it swiveled this plug sideways so that I could pull it out so as you can see I made some marks on it which is fine uh, but I beat it in and it swiveled sideways and I pulled it out and sure enough there were some pieces of valve seat down in here um, so when I reinstall this, uh, I'm going to put like a small bead of silicone around this edge when I seat this back in there. Um, and it did get uh, beat in a little bit on the side, so I put it in a vise, or a, yeah, I put it in a vise and kind of flattened it back out. So this should be reusable, or you can probably find one. You can probably pick one up. I may see how long it would take to get here, or I may just reuse this one. But anyway. So to actually really clean this out good, I poured about a 50-50 mixture of purple power and water. Uh, I put the plug back in actually, once I found out there was a lot of pieces in there. Um, and I poured about a 50-50 mixture of purple power and water uh, in through the intake here, down in all of these holes. I scraped the edges with a straight razor blade and got all that old uh, gasket mess off of there and all of the, the carbon and stuff that was built up on this edge. I scraped that off um, and I poured the um, the mixture down in those holes and let it sit for about 10 minutes and then I took the plug out, drained it and blew it out with uh, blew it out with um, air compressor. And uh, I looked around in there uh, pretty good and I felt around the edges and seems like I got everything out so um, if there is any small pieces in there, they're, they're very small and it's a lot fewer than there were originally. So that's what I got done there. Alright, so I'll go ahead and show you how to put those, put these uh, lifters in and the uh, rockers. Alright, so if you remember how I was bagging these up 
previously. This came off the number four section of the head, the number four piston part of the head, uh, and the old, from the old head, um, and it was on the exhaust side. So these parts go right here, and I have the guides in this in this bag as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some oil. I'm going to coat the inside of the lifter bore. I'm going to find this lifter. This is the lifter here. And obviously, you can tell the way it goes um, because of the way the wheel is on the bottom. That has to spin across the cam. So basically, the flat sides are uh, perpendicular with the cam. Okay, quick uh, correction to this part of the video. Um, I said the flat side of the lifter is perpendicular with the cam. It's perpendicular to the cam lobe is what I meant to say. Uh, the flat side is actually parallel with the cam itself. It's perpendicular with the lobe, so just a quick correction there. And if you look inside of the Look inside of the bore there. I'm not sure if you can see that that hole in there. That is where oil is pumped in to the lifter. And if you look at the lifter, one side of this has the oil inlet jet. And so that's going to go toward the um, where the oil is pumped through. And like I said, the flat sides are perpendicular um, to the uh, cam. And I actually, before I started filming, I've already pre-oiled this uh, lifter itself. So that's going to slide right in there. Just like that. Okay, so both lifters are installed um, for the valves over this cylinder. And this is the... Uh, I'm not sure what Ford calls this exactly, but it's, it's a guide that keeps um, some engines allow these lifters to spin freely in the bore here. These flat sides seat inside of this guide so that these don't spin. So those, uh, the little oil inlet jet and the little jet in the side of the bore where the oil's pumped in, they stay lined up, relatively lined up. It's going to be moving up and down, but uh, they stay uh, um, uh, vertically aligned, those two holes do. So this piece, um, one side of it has a little notch pointing down, and this bore over here has a little notch raised up. Um, it won't go that way because there's nothing for this notch on this uh, this guide here to hang off of. So the only way for this to actually go in there is um, just like that. You may have to you may have to tweak. Yeah, you may have to tweak the uh, the lifters. All right, so that's that. So now I'm going to um, get the uh, this other guide, um, and it actually seats here uh, for the the rocker arm bolt. This is the piece that holds down the lifter guides there. Um, and there's only one way it can go as well. And it seats across um, the center of the lifter guides. Um, and you do have to kind of flex it a little bit to get it to fall in there. And now what I did earlier is I did one side at a time. Uh, because the um, fulcrum seats will actually fit down in here and it will push this uh, this fitting down. So I'm going to go ahead and get these lined up a little better uh, with two hands and then I'll go ahead and put uh, a, a rocker on one side. 
So to get these started, I'm just using a um, a 10 millimeter T handle to just snug these down. So then I can go to the other side and snug that side down as well. Alright, it's um it's all torqued down now. The basics of the head are put together now. Uh, next step for me is probably gonna be adding some pieces back onto this before uh, I move on to um, uh, the block itself and putting in new pistons. So I'll be putting, this is the intake side here, I'll be putting the uh, intake manifold back on and the, um, the intermediary pieces, the injectors, where the injectors are, uh, the CPS module, the, the cam position sensor. If I'm not mistaken, I called that something different in a previous video, so uh, my bad. That's actually, that was a I may have called that like an idle sensor or something. I'm not sure why. Um, which that's wrong. This that's it. This, the CPS goes here. This is the cam position sensor, which makes perfect sense. So I'll put that back in, and I'll do the intake manifold. Um, that'll probably be the um, the last thing I put on the head before I mount it on the block. I think I'm gonna put the exhaust manifold on um, after. I've installed the block or the head on the block uh, simply because uh, I replaced the exhaust manifold before um, and I know I can get that on there without um, without a whole lot of trouble I mean it's a little tricky but I can get it on there what I don't know that I can do again is uh, mount the head back on there with the intake manifold and the exhaust manifold already attached to the head that was a, a task for me to get that out and I don't want to try to put that in like that so I think I will hook the intake manifold up and um, and then I'll be done with the head until I get the uh, the new pistons put in so that's it for this time um, thanks for watching guys